Okay, so just sit comfortably. Uh, we will we'll finish the evening again with a, a short meditation, but just sit comfortably for now. Uh, just to say, I am now officially back. <laughs> Someone apparently was saying, is he actually just a guest on this retreat? Uh, which is understandable. Um, I had to go to another meeting last week. I think, anyway, I, mean, I haven't seemed to go to a lot of meetings nowadays. Um, but I'm now back. This, I'm back for the rest of the course now. I'm slightly and. Un- un- and unfortunate to have to miss two so early on, so I'm sorry about that. Okay, so here we are. Um, thank you, Pranimans, for uh, giving us a very clear recap on where we've been so far. Um, I think in, in, increasingly at the moment, increasingly at the moment, at the moment I'm, I'm thinking of this stage, what we're calling positive emotion, and, uh, you know, we've already seeing that positive is not a great word, emotion is not a great word. Um, I, I'm increasingly thinking of this stage as a stage of being good, being a good man or a good woman. Um, I know that sometimes people are uneasy about that language, but we do kind of know what it means. Um, nobody really doesn't know what it means. You can sort of raise objections to it, but really you, you know what it means. You know it means being honest, it means being kind, it means uh, not reacting to people, it means doing what you need to do, it means all those ordinary things, doesn't it, being a, a good person, um, good man, good woman. Um, very, very difficult to do, uh, to be genuinely good. Um, much more difficult than it's cracked up to be. Um, it's very, very difficult to do. Um, it's much more of an arse than it seems, being good. You can do a kind of impersonation of it, In other words, you can be sort of nice, and uh, actually some people can't even manage that, can they? (laughs) Anyway, um, you can be kind of nice and likeable enough and uh, and, uh, amenable enough, um, but that's not what we mean by good. Uh, Even the word good, it's got that, it's got a particular resonance and weightiness um, that you can never quite unpack. Some of these moral words like good and beautiful and true, you can never really unpack them. If you don't get it, after a certain point, you can't be helped with it very much, if you see what I mean. Uh, I mean, you do meet people, and I've met many people in my life, who I just think, well, they're just such a good man or a good woman. Um, And I want that particular word. It seems to communicate a certain weightiness, a certain certain integrity. uh, very particular, isn't it? Um, doesn't always mean, for instance, they're happy. It doesn't mean necessarily that they're always easy to be around. Um, or even sometimes quite likeable. But you just think they're good, they're trustworthy. It's all, often very connected with trust, isn't it? They're trustworthy. Uh, whether I like them or not, whether I disagree with them or not, actually tell you what, come, if it's tricky, there'll be a person I can turn to. And it'll be good, it'll be fine. Um, they're good, you know. And sometimes, you, I don't know whether you've had this, I didn't mean to say this, but you ever had this when you just meet people, you can sometimes feel that very quickly with someone that you've never met before. You want to say, I mean, quite often, I, you know, I, I meet a lot of people and I teach a lot. And sometimes I meet people and I want to just go, you're fine, don't worry. <laughs> and they're, they're like, yeah, but I just, uh, no, no, it's, it's fine. You're, you're fine, it's fine. Don't get that. And I... And it's not, I don't do that to everybody, I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I don't look forward to it. Um, <laughs> um, but some people you meet, you just want to say, no, no, don't worry about that, don't worry about that. That doesn't, that don't, don't worry about it. You're fine. Some people you do want to be much more tested with, testy with. Um, but some people you just meet and you sort of have this instinct. I mean, that instinct can be wrong, of course, but often that instinct isn't. We human beings probably have a, quite a deep sense of who's trustworthy or not. We must do for survival reasons. We must have a deep um, resonance with, is this person trustworthy or not? I mean, I was watching something recently where they're suggesting that because more and more of us are communicating on on, uh, phones and through technology, that we're not using that instinct anywhere near as much as we used to, because knowing whether someone's trustworthy is a lot to do with actually looking at them and taking them in feeling that vibe that they have. You know, is that, is that guy or that woman, is that telling the truth or is that wanting to look like they're telling the truth? Is that trustworthy and dependable or trying to make me feel that they're trustworthy and dependable? 
very, very deep instinct. You can't very easily translate it. But if you're communicating more and more through secondary means, you'll lose, well, one theory is that you'll gradually lose the capacity to read people. And then you're in real trouble, you know, because some people are definitely not trustworthy in French. I no doubt about it. And I have met some that, you know, are like a little bit dangerous. Um, quite frightening when you do meet someone like that. You, um, you don't meet it very often, actually, it's quite rare, but it's quite frightening when you do. Um, any road, there you go. <laughs> We're all nice people, aren't we? Yeah, no, no, nobody here. Um, yeah, so this, this stage really is, is this serious matter about being good, you know, being gen finding a way of being genuinely good. Much more difficult than we think, very often, if we're honest with ourselves. If we're not honest with ourselves, you can sort of get around it. But if you're honest with yourself, much more difficult to do. I was just talking about someone in my group about, you know, that experience where you can feel in absolute rage in a tube because someone's pushed in front of you. Um, it can be really shocking, can't it? I don't know, if you're truthful. Gosh, is that... I feel that. You know, um, I mean, one can, it's so easy to think, well, it's because they did that. So it's not really me, they did it. And this is a response to it. But sometimes it's really shocking. I remember once with um, Alex, one of my partner's daughters, um, I was carrying her, she was only three, or something like that, you know, I was completely in love with her. And somebody just came a bit too close to us, um, sort of slightly knocked into us. And it wasn't their fault, they just thought, you know, they just weren't looking. And I, and I felt this kind of wolf-like, you know, aggression, like it was... Like it like came out of my bones. There's just something, you know. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to nice like Buddhist guy? <laughs> oh, my name, my name. <laughs> 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 really, really kind of shockingly deep instinct, you know. I almost bared bared my teeth, you know, like an ape, you know, um, which is un unbecoming in a 56 year old. Anyway, <laughs> and frankly useless. Uh, but I was shocked by, I was shocked in that moment by the depth of the aggression. Um, I, I think there's actually something very important about that, and perhaps we'll come back to this later in the course, because you can think that what we're trying to do here is get rid of that. And that's bad, 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 bad. And we need to be nice, nice, nice all the time. Um, and what we try to do is try, we're trying to not act on that aggression, because people don't mean it. They, this person who knocked into us, wasn't no knocking into us, they just weren't thinking and knocked into someone. Mm. Funny, when someone knocks into you, you think, why are they knocking into me? They're not in mo knocking into you, they're just knocking into someone. You happen to be that someone. That's all it is, nothing to do with you at all. But it's taken like that, isn't it, very personally. Um, so you definitely need to work with not expressing it. But all of that energy that you feel in it, and it's colossal if you get that moment of kind of rage, you know, it's a colossal kind of amount of energy. You really need all that. You are definitely not trying to get rid of that energy. Um, you're not trying to be good at the expense of your energy. Um, that's what, I think that's why goodness gets a bad press, is because it's very easy to think that it's to do with restraining your energies, kind of ironing yourself out so that you're this nice kind of person. Um, it's not to do with that. Uh, part of being genuinely good is really thinking, golly, that's me. I've got that sort of anger. I've got that kind of impatience. Or, you know, it might be, I've got that kind of lust that suddenly I frankly, have, you know, just want what, exactly what I want, you know, um, or whatever it is. Um, so part of being good, did you see why this second stage needs to be based on the first stage? You, the first stage is partly about getting to know yourself being really quite almost ruthlessly honest with yourself, about yourself, not getting into some sort of spiritual fantasy about the... <laughs> not, you know, don't put me with incense burning at your bell. <laughs> um, usually, frankly, it's just a fantasy, and I feel like saying, stop that for a start. <laughs> Somebody was saying they were writing spiritual poems, and I felt like saying, well, that's the way you're going wrong. <laughs> you can stop that for a start. Um, um, Bad idea. Um, <laughs> it would be better to write a poem about how much you hate people because it's going to be much more genuine, usually. 
uh, unless you're a saint, and they're very, very short supply. Yeah? Um, so this, do you see how you need the first stage of integration to really feel all the energies and pulls of you and know yourself, and in a way not be frightened of that, um, and not be um, self-condemning about that. What you're trying to do, think, golly, this is what, I've got all of this, I can really love people, sometimes I'm really generous, sometimes I'm a nightmare. I was at a meeting a while ago, and I said to the person leading the meeting, I, I said, do you want me at this next meeting? And he looked a bit unsure. I said, I, I know, sometimes I'm really good, aren't I, in meetings, and sometimes I'm a nightmare. And this other friend of mine said, that's a very good self-assessment. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for that. <laughs> you know, what it's like, have you ever been in a meeting where you're, ov- you're just obviously not helping? <laughs> um, I can do that as well. So you're trying to, in that first stage, really take on board who you are. Um, again, it's difficult. And then you're trying to be good. Uh, then you're trying not to act on aggression. Um, you're trying to love people. Sometimes that's too much to ask. You're trying to at least understand them, or at least take the trouble to understand them. Um, so much of it is to do with, I don't really understand why you're behaving like that. Um, usually if you understand people, uh, you can love them. That's what I find anyway. Like, yeah, Prenny Manus was talking about the life story. We, we started a group, and we're starting with life stories, short life stories. And sometimes you hear someone's life story, and you think... Oh, okay, yeah, okay, well, yeah, there you go. Of course you'll be like that. You know, I, I remember someone I used to live with, I found it really hard to live with. And you hear his life story, and it was just the, the, like the worst ever nightmare of a life story, ever, one of the worst I've ever heard. Um, I've heard some corkers. Um, and you, when you heard it, you think, well, of course it'll be difficult. What, what will I expect? It's nothing to do with me, it's just to do with all sorts of conditions. As soon as you understand someone, you can love them and forgive them. Uh, it's just it's quite difficult and it takes a bit of work understanding people. So part of being good is taking the trouble to understand people. Yeah. Um, actually, part of being, being good is, I think, increasingly, part of being good is being courageous. I think I'd like to think of this stage as what we're calling, more and more I find, pallid, rather pallidly, positive emotion, because it sounds so drippy, doesn't it? Um, uh, I think, I think quite a lot of it is to do with courage. Um, taking courage. Um, and one of the things to watch for in your life is boredom. It's funny, you, know, you, you read self-help books and they always talk about grief and hurt and rage. And I haven't read any self-help books, actually. <laughs> I'm just making it up. <laughs> That's what I imagine that they talk about. <laughs> Just to be quite frankly truthful, uh, but I think for for many of us, a, a really big issue is boredom. That if we're honest with ourselves, we're a bit bored. I was in a, one meeting today. I thought I am so bored. <laughs> <laughs> I have got nothing to say about that. I don't understand what that. You know, I'm so bored. <laughs> I'm definitely bored. <laughs> but then, how am I going to help? You know. Um, so one of the things we need to do with our life is look at our boredom. If, if we're bored, it's often telling us something. You know, like, you know when you have friends and you meet up and you catch up? I met up with a friend the other day and we meet up, we catch up, he tells me lots of things, he's very amusing and likeable. And I'm thinking, God, I'm finding this really boring. It's partly because we've done it again and again. You know, when you get into that with social situations where you sort of think, oh, we've sort of done this. You tell me that story and then I go and I say this thing. If you're honest, it's boring, isn't it? Um, not always then clear what, what do I do I, I think that becomes a moment where you, how do I be good now and, I, and being good is not just you know, enduring being bored it's thinking okay um, do I need to sort of just feel that and try and take more care and sympathy and give them more attention or do I need to say actually you know we, we, this is, how do I get out of this social patterning that I'm doing. We, we, and we all do it, don't we? We just sort of fall into a way of being. Um, which doesn't really quite satisfy us, but is relatively safe. It feels relatively safe. Um, you, you survive it, don't you? You survive that lunch. You survive that gathering. Um, so being good is not about surviving things. 
it's about making things grow around you. Um, so sometimes, I, I think sometimes in this stage, it's about telling the truth more, uh, certainly to yourself, but it's also about telling the truth to other people more. Um, and s- but finding a way of doing that, that, that that's good. When you can do it, I tell you, it's one of the most fulfilling things ever. When you've got that, golly, I'm, I'm really a bit fed up with this. But just saying to someone, I'm fit, fed up with this, this doesn't ha- that doesn't help at all. Or, I don't know, how do we make our friendship go deeper? That just doesn't, that doesn't help at all. Because you just, everyone just goes, oh my God. <laughs> you know, deeper is an awful word. I think we should ban it, actually. How do you go deeper? Just, hmm? <laughs> no idea, but it sounds like I should be. You know, um, uh, I think it's a frightening word. Nobody knows what it means. It's just a, anyway, there you go. Um, so, you know, how do I make this, I think the question should be, how do I make the world around me come alive more? How do I, um, how do I flourish my own life and the life of those around me? Um, one way that I've been thinking about it how, is how, what, what's the contribution that's asked of me now? Um, and there's always a contribution that's being asked of us. So you go into a shop, you buy something, the very least you can do is actually look at the person and say thank you. Um, that's a contribution you can make. It's awful when people don't do that. Um, you're dehumanising people when... I say, yeah, we're all, we all do it at times. Um, that's a con- simple contribution you can make. Sometimes the contribution you can make is to say to your friend, tell you what, I just don't agree with you. Tell you what, I've never really agreed with that. And uh, I've never known how to say it. And when you do something like that, you go, whoop, you can feel the whole thing, wibbly wobbly moment where I'm, you know, I am like, okay, I don't know what happens now. And you have to be careful with that because if you overdo it, you, you hurt people. And if, if you hurt people, that's really serious because not only if you seriously hurt them, but they will trust you less and less and you won't be able to, ha- you won't be, able to become good. Um, the great challenge of being good is how do you unite love with truth? If you just try to love people, usually you're bored, actually, because you don't love people that much. Um, you'd like to, you'd like to think you are, perhaps, but you don't really. If you just tell the truth, you, ju- you just get on people's nerves, and usually you end up just getting more and more critical. And then in certain moods, if you're like me, you can easily get more and more critical, and that doesn't work either. What goodness is, is a unification of truth and love, where your capacity to tell the truth is unified with your capacity to love them, and they become the same thing. The, the place to start is being truthful about yourself. Actually, you know, so when they say that, and, then, and you do that usual thing, oh yeah, fine, you know, <laughs> you say, actually, I, I'm, I'm not fine, um, if, if that's true, you know, or you say, actually, I'm, at the moment I'm in a bad mood, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just, <laughs> Um, you take that risk where life starts to actually happen around you and it's a bit more scary, isn't it? Um, Because you don't know anymore. The reason we get bored is we just paddle about in the known. This is what I say about this. Buddhists can do this just like anybody else. You know, you say this, I say, oh, all things are impermanent. You know, (laughs) you just say the things you say. (laughs) Do more metabhavna. Well, it's all about mindfulness. You can just come up with dreadful things. You know? <laughs> I've done it myself. <laughs> Do it. But it's just very easy to slip into just saying the stuff you say. Um, and you'll know it if you're attentive, because you'll feel bored. Uh, you can't always live outside of boredom. Um, that would be too much. Some people, I think, really do. I've met people who, their lives are so incredibly creative, often with quite a lot of trouble around them, but they're really alive. Wow, you know. Um, I'd much rather that, but I'm, I'm temperamentally rather timid. Um, hard to believe at the moment, isn't it? <laughs> anyway, I am. Um, so you can't, you can't be living outside of boredom all the time, but you want to be really on that threshold quite a bit. You know when you have another dinner party and it's re- you're really bored? Either stop going to dinner my, my advice was don't have dinner parties because they tend to be boring, because it's very difficult to get into any real conversation, isn't it? Because... There's something about a grouping that's very difficult to get it to go deeper together. Much easier one-to-one. Um, yeah, so... And I don't mean kind of just ramping up things all the time where you emotionalise... And it's often not about emotionalising things. Um, 
You're trying to contribute. Re really, every situation is asking you a contribution of us. And this, this stage of the path is, a, is really about living up to that ask. What can I give just now? Um, sometimes that giving is a bit, of a, a bit of an irritation. And you have to be really careful with that. But sometimes you, say, you have to stand up, don't you, and just say, no. Or, or actually, can we not do this anymore? Um, or, I'm sorry, I, I tend to talk too much. What, what, say more? You know, I don't know how you, all of us have got patternings that where we keep our life in a kind of the known, and it's known and therefore rather boring and, and stable and safe, apparently safe, but it's not good enough for us and we know it because we don't feel alive. Yeah? So, this stage I think is about being genuinely good. Very, very difficult. Very, very difficult to do. Now, the first sign of being genuinely good is uh, friends, that you get friends. As yeah? uh, soon as you tie genuinely to be good, the first thing you'll start to see is you have friends in your life. Because goodness isn't some kind of universal feeling, and it's definitely not an ideology at all of any kind, um, even a goodly ideology. Um, it's, it, it, it appears in the world as friendship. Yeah? Uh, so this, this part, this, the, the, the part of, the, of this phase I want to really emphasise um, for this week is friendship. By friendship I mean particularly um, friendships of, in, the, in the, your own gender, if you're men with men, women with women. Not because friends can't, you know, friendship can't happen between the genders, they can. Um, but I mean, I know of it much more from, the, from men's point of view. Men often are actually very, very uneasy about making friends with other men. It's, it's actually quite rare for men. I think it is more, more usual for women to make friends with each other, but it's quite rare for men. Uh, and if you're not careful, the genders kind of get each other to do the bit that they can't do. Um, and usually your friendships with your across genders are much, much better and healthier if you've already got strong friendships in your own... Uh, gender. I've met women who've most of their friends are men, and what does that say about your feelings about being a woman? It must say something, I think. Um, so f friendship is the first thing. As soon as you start to be good, what it will appear as is friendship, because you'll meet someone that you like and attracted to, and then you'll say, "Oh, what, what, you know, the other day you said that." I don't, what, what, what was that? Because I, I was sort of struck by it. Can you, just, can you say more about it? And oh gosh, I didn't know that. Um, can I? Um, do you want help with that? You know, you start. Goodness comes through the particular. It's not a. Um, it's not a theory about people, because there aren't any people. There's only particular persons. So, goodness is always particular. It's. I give you that gift because that's something that you would like. I'd help you because you need that help. Not that I want to help people in some broad, abstract way, but, oh, you need me to help you, don't you? Or well, you need me to listen to you just now. Or you need me to challenge you just now because you've said this 2,300 times already. It's about time somebody actually said, OK, you know. <laughs> um, that's, and, and how do I do that well? How do I do that with full sympathy? Really tricky. Really, really tricky thing to do. If you can do it, as soon as you do it, you don't even need to wait for the result of it. As soon as you do it, you think, golly, my life's worth living. As soon as you do it. I had this lovely meeting with a friend of mine. He'd been telling me things, something about how he is in groups for ages and how difficult he finds it in groups for ages. And I'd been thinking about it, and I met up with him, and I said, oh, you know, after lots of niceness, um, <laughs> um, I said, uh, it's, it's self-pity, isn't it? What the mental state that you're in when you do that is self-pity. That's really what we're talking about. And he's very, very receptive and very, very honourable. And he was, like, shocked and, oh, and there was that sort of slightly frightening pause. And I was thinking, oh, dear, I've hurt his feelings. Um, and there was a, that, that moment. Um, I mean, that, the reason I can tell you, because I, I easily fall into self-pity. It's one of my bad habits. We've all got them. Uh, and I was saying, yes, I can, I can do that, but it really is, doesn't work, does it? So let's not say that it's this. Let's call it by what it is, and then how are we going to work with it? Without any shame attached to it, without any, oh, isn't it terrible I do that? Because that 
that's just more self-pity, actually. Um, <laughs> let's just sort of say, well, that's, what's, that's what the issue is. It's self-pity. Really tempting self-pity. Really gets you nowhere. I've tried it lots of times. Um, how are we going to change that? Yeah? But, so even from that little example, it's very, very tough to be good. It's, it's a proper human work to be good. It's not a small thing. Your actions really matter. Um, one of the life stories, what someone was saying that they were a very strong nihilist, and he was saying because you know his his basic view was that nothing ever doesn't nothing matters, nothing means anything, so it doesn't matter how I behave, it doesn't matter at all because nothing matters, nothing means anything. There aren't any you know goodness, ha ha, you know, um, virtue. Ha, ha. You know, they're all just sort of socially constructed pretend things. Blah, 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 blah. They don't mean anything. You can just trash them. So what, what, what happens if you've got that nihilistic view is it doesn't matter how you behave. And that actually, that's a nightmare. How you behave is really, really important. Um, it's your life. If you be- change your behaviour, your life changes immediately. You can be in a really bad mood, and you can say, just to say thank you very much for that. Um, you can, you know, your behaviour, especially when it's coming out of integration... How you behave in the moment, really, really important. That is a really serious matter, your behaviour. It's not a trivial thing. It's not a good, do-gooding thing. It's how do I talk to this friend of mine in a way that I say, look, I do really, I've actually for ages wanted to kind of talk to you about this. I really don't mean this, and I really value that, but I do want, need to talk to you about that. You know, how do you do that well? If you can learn to do that well, your life will flourish. If you don't learn to do that well, your life will keep pushing you out of it. Because if you don't engage in that creative, courageous way of goodness, you'll just want to keep checking out, won't you? You'll just want to be in a a meeting and thinking, I wish I wasn't here, and then you'll get resentful of being there, um, then you'll feel undervalued, etc. It's a proper activity, being good. It's not the end of the Buddhist path by any means. There's much, much further to go. Um, but that's what this, this stage is about. Um, and the main thing I wanted to emphasise for this week is friends. So my home practice, as it were, is see whether you can, um, either this week coming, don't worry too much whether it's this week or not, uh, can you spend more time with a friend and when you spend more time with a friend, how can you either um, honour the friendship? Sometimes it is just like phoning them. You know? um, so it's, it's very a bit related to how your relationship with your parents. You know, do you ring them? You, you have to honour those those duties. You know, that's part of it, isn't it? Um, you know, meet up with your friend and find a way of. Is it that you need to listen more? Are you one of those people that sort of talks a lot but doesn't listen? Is it that you, when you meet up with them, you talk about politics and you never really get round to anything, really? You just sort of agree. Isn't Trump awful? Yes, isn't he awful? He's awful. Yeah, he's really awful. You know what he said? Oh, God. <laughs> you know, it's just completely fruitless, so it's kind of conversation. Nobody learns a thing. Uh, you just congratulate yourself, and they congratulate you, and then you congratulate them for saying the same things that you do. It's really boring. Um, um, so see if you can... How do you do that with a friend? You know, is it that you need to talk more? Is it need to talk less? Is it need to be more challenging? Is it need to be less challenging? Um, very often with friendship, the main thing is you need to spend more time with them. Uh, very often, the reason our friendships aren't very strong is simply because we don't give them much attention. We don't give them much time. We're not, we don't treat them very seriously because you know, we're in a very romantic world where it's a romantic relationship that's absolutely preeminent. You know, nothing wrong with romance, but... Very often we think that friends are just what happens when we haven't got a partner, you know. And then we wonder why the friendship isn't very strong, because we haven't given much to it, you know. Um, so this week, see if you can, you know, even if it's just cogitate the, 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 the health of your friendships. Have you got friends? I've met people who really, the friends they had were all back at school, they don't have them anymore. It's either because they're just working all the time or they're, if you're fixated on success or on love or something, but they haven't got friends anymore. So that's the main thing I want to emphasise in terms of this theme. Yeah, um, try and spend some time with a friend. What goes on? Is this a friendship? Are you being a friend? The main way to have friends is to be a friend. 
are you actually being a friend? Um, like um, Benji, I live with upstairs. He, I, I was chatting to him in his room, and my lighter doesn't work. And it's not because I smoke, <laughs> but because I light candles in my room, and I couldn't light them. Anyway, he got. I came back the next, just later on the day, and there, there was a new little lighter for me sitting on my desk. That's what friendship is. Yeah, um, it's not that Benji thinks the world needs lighters. <laughs> you know, friendship is to do with oh, I could do that. Yeah, I could. It's just a bit of thought. Yeah. Um, and you usually start with small things. But if you've got a long-standing friendship where you do the same thing all the time and you say how terrible Trump is, can we, can we just stop that? Because you're not ever going to learn anything, really. <laughs> Guys. <laughs> um, OK. Um, rant over. <laughs> I seem to be in one of those moods uh, today. Um, and then what was your other home? So, and then see if you can carry on doing this uh, try to remember, carry on remembering the five things that you feel grateful for that day. Um, really, really valid that. Uh, and if that's all you do, that's great. Just remember, here's the five, five things I feel grateful for. That, that's going to really help you. Yeah? Um, and see if you can give something every day, if you can. Uh, try and be generous every day. And then see if, see if whether you can carry on with this uh, exploration of Vedana in meditation. With this home practice, the main thing I want to keep emphasising is that you go on a retreat, you meditate regularly every day by the end of this course, and you make friends. Yeah. If you could do that, and you didn't do the breathing space, you didn't do mindfulness work, you, were, you forgot everything. I lost my hat the other day. <laughs> the man who writes you know, a book on mindfulness loses his hat in cinema. Um, <laughs> not much of a headline. Um, you know, don't worry about all that. Just make friends, go on a retreat, because you know that makes sense, and um, start meditating every day. Start a practice of being aware. Yeah? So let's just break up into, uh, into pairs now, and um, just talk about those areas. So how can you carry on practicing something to do with integration? So it might be the mindful walk and the breathing space. It might, not be, it might be the mindful meal. You might want to do t- both of them. What are you going to do from... Make sure you're doing at least one thing from each, yeah? But also, talk a little bit about your friends and what, what could you do with your friends, yeah? How could you deepen that friendship? Okay, so let's just do that for now.